Hello everyone, I am Dimple Rangila and today we will talk about use of folk materials in the teaching learning process during early schooling. Every community has its folk stories, songs, riddles, drawings, paintings, puzzles etc. While facilitating learning, these materials may be used in their full potential because these materials not only facilitate for easy and meaningful acquisition of learning outcomes but also makes the learning process pleasurable, interesting for the children. Also, a learning kind of this kind is something which children retain for a much longer period of time. So let's see and understand the socio-cultural components. If you can interact with tribal children in their mother tongue and have adequate knowledge of their socio-cultural elements that they are, there are in their environment, then you are in a better position to facilitate their learning, particularly during early periods of their schooling. Undoubtedly, a teacher from the local community who knows the mother tongue of the children will easily bring socio-cultural elements of the local community in the classroom which the children are familiarized with. But when a teacher neither knows the mother tongue of the children nor have any acquaintance with their socio-cultural components, there is a communication gap between the students and the teacher. In that case, the teacher will not be able to understand her or his students fully and students will also not be able to follow the teacher completely. First of all, the teacher has to understand the socio-cultural process and identify culturally available resources in tribal area for contextualizing the learning teaching process without facing any difficulties. For this, the teacher has to be a part of the community life. For example, if a teacher has to discuss the type of food from a textbook, he or she can first start with the food type and food habits of the tribal people. And when the children will themselves talk about their own food habits, she can relate and link the same to what she had to taught, she had to teach in the class. So to link their experiences on type of food, the teacher has to go beyond the textbook. In other words, he or she must use children's experience on types of food, food and health, etc. as the base for initiating the textbook knowledge. Folk materials for facilitating learning. Folk materials like folk stories, songs and other rhymes which, are, which the children are familiar with are very useful socio-cultural elements that can be effectively used for facilitating learning of all children and particularly the children from tribal communities where these materials are available in plenty and children are extremely fond of them. Not only that, children can relate to such folk materials much more. It will not be something alien or foreign to, for them. It will be something that they already have a knowledge about. So, how can planning and managing a multilingual, multilingual classroom can take place? Every classroom in the schools, especially in the tribal dominated areas, is a multilingual classroom. A multilingual classroom is one where children speak more than one language. They come from different linguistic backgrounds. Either children from different tribal groups with their respective mother tongues are in one class, reading in the standard state language, which can be the typical multilingual situation, or all children in a class are from one tribal group with the same mother tongue reading in the standard state language which is a typically bilingual thing wherein they know two languages. Although the situation prevailing in the classroom is bilingual or multilingual, the classroom teaching learning transactions are conducted in the standard state language ignoring the mother tongue of the children, the language which the children have heard for the first time they, they, when they were born after their birth and which they understand completely. In order to make learning more meaningful and interesting from the very early stage of schooling, using mother tongue and gradually learning more languages, a program of multilingual education has been initiated in some selected schools in the tribal areas of Odisha and Andhra Pradesh under the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan. 
multilingual education is a program of language learning and cognitive development that provides a strong educational foundation in the first language until and unless the child is really comfortable and has a strong base in the first language it will be very difficult for them to proceed further successful bridging to one or more additional languages so from the one language that they know as a mother tongue mother tongue that will serve as a bridge to move on to additional languages and then finally enabling the use of both or all languages for effective learning of different subjects since language is the vehicle of culture and traditions no sensible language curriculum can afford to miss the cultural context while learning the language or learning other subjects through the mother tongue so it becomes very important that the mother tongue is included in their day to day teaching of the classroom in the multilingual education program the curriculum is based on the cultural context of the local community using local language local knowledge and customs through which a child can develop common concepts of all areas of learning so the purpose of a multilingual education program is to develop appropriate cognitive and reasoning skills enabling children to operate equally in their native state and national languages it should be started from the mother tongue that is their home language that they speak at home with transition to second language and then other languages in a graded manner the third or the second language should never be introduced without their more emphasis on the first language or the mother tongue that they are used to a multilingual classroom situation reveals that children with different mother tongue learn together in a class although they live in the same locality their lifestyle food habits religious beliefs dress and ornaments are different in other words their socio cultural background is different this is a peculiar classroom situation where a teacher has to play an innovative role to facilitate learning of each child so that every child is included and their beliefs customs and their cultural knowledge is taken into account and then based on that language learning has to be taken place so in that case managing a multilingual classroom is a real challenge for the teacher so the teacher it requires the teacher to be a speaker of the child's language and preferably a member of the child's community so if a teacher is belongs to the same community as that of a child she will know the language much comfortably and it can be used in the classroom expects close rapport among the students and the teachers the students will form a clear cut rapport with the teacher and that way they it will familiarize them with the language and learning it emphasizes the values of the child's culture when the teacher is identifying and emphasizing on the child's culture and the values that the child is bringing with himself or herself in the classroom it further gives the value and the child also gets to know about the same it provides a safe and developmentally sensible bridge to other cultures so a child in the same classroom will get to know about several other cultures the values of those cultures and this way an exchange of the cultural knowledge will also take place and also likewise other languages that the child will encounter learning begins with known and moves to unknown so this bridging of what the child knows already will lead to the un unknown first the child will talk about the concepts from his or her own language and then move will move on very comfortably and smoothly to the domain which is unknown to them uses cultural concepts to teach basic academic concepts so again the cultural knowledge that the child brings with himself or herself to the classroom from the family will be used to understand the academic concepts it builds on the vocabulary that the child possesses and adds the second language vocabulary from what the child has learned so this means that the child has already vocabulary for certain things from his or her own mother tongue so once the child is comfortable with those terms the child will use the same terms in the second language which will be much comfortable 
It requires involvement of local community in the development of curriculum, learning materials and learning teachers pro teaching process. It becomes imperative and very important to involve the local community because they can help the teacher plan in development of the curriculum, development of the learning materials so that the local art and craft, folk stories, rhymes, these can be used in the teaching learning process. It utilizes thematic approach to integrate child's cultural knowledge with academic learning. So the thematic approach to different themes that are used that will be integrated along with the child's cultural knowledge and again it will aid in the academic learning of the child. Let's see the about the materials that are required to manage a multilingual classroom. To manage multilingual class, a teacher has to prepare theme webs and some contextual teaching learning material such as a picture story book in the child's mother tongue and if the classroom is multilingual then the teacher must have a picture story book which is relevant for each of the languages that are spoken by the children in that classroom. An alphabet chart again in the mother tongue, word webs, multilingual dictionary that means a same word how is spoken in different languages total physical response in second language etc we will see all these so let's first talk about the picture story book picture story book is a reading material in which left hand side of the page contains a picture and the right hand side has the text the text elaborates the picture in mother tongue the sentences are simple and short it is one type of picture reading which promotes reading with guessing. Taking the community's folk tales, the picture storybooks can be prepared in children's mother tongue where children can develop reading skills as well as develop the power of comprehension. If a teacher has about 20 to 30 picture stories for a class, the children will get a scope to enhance their language skills, especially the reading skills. And it will be more relevant because it will be as per the mother tongue of the children. So they will find it interesting to read and identify and guess the things that are there in the picture storybooks in their own language, a language which they know. So it will be very interesting activity for the children and as well as it will lay aid in their learning. A multilingual dictionary. A teacher can prepare a multilingual dictionary by taking words from the mother tongue of each child in his or her class. He or she can take the help of a local mother tongue teacher and children for building these words. So a multilingual dictionary is hence a device for easy language transition. It not only increases vocabulary of the children but also enhances their power of comprehension. Also, this multilingual dictionary will come in handy for the teacher. She can also use it for her own purpose. So, if there is one particular word, she needs to write it uh, in all the languages that are spoken by the children in the classroom because it's a multilingual classroom. So, this dictionary will be a multilingual dictionary. Letter recognition card. It's a chart that is contextual for the Santali children. This kind of material helps a teacher to teach letters of alphabets meaningfully. Total physical response. Usually children not well versed in a particular language can respond to some commands that instruct the student to give some very common physical responses. For example, the child is not very well, well versed by now in his or her mother tongue and the child joins school. So there are certain words that the teacher needs to make him or her uh, learn so that the child responds to those words. These are commonly in the following forms. So things like stand up, sit down, touch your head, turn around, hold your pen, touch your nose and all are called the total physical response. This is a type of listen and do activity. So the teacher is going to instruct and the child has to do. In early classes, especially in class one, the teacher can develop a second language through these TPRs or the total physical response. So for all these words, she can develop a list of words which are spoken by the child in his or her mother tongue. Multilingual education program 
holds a lot of promise for several innovative ideas for using the language and cultural context of the community for encouraging meaningful and sustainable effective learning of very high quality. Although it is highly suitable for the schools in the tribal areas, it is also equally effective for other schools where a child has to learn and interact in more than one language and it comes very handy for the teacher to be aware of the multilingual education program wherein every child's cultural knowledge, cultural context, background comes to the fore by using different ways or techniques that the teacher can bring to the classroom for effective teaching learning in the classroom. So the teacher can make up a list of tales of stories, songs, games or rhymes or even jokes for them, that matter that are commonly known to the class or a section of the class. Have them try to trace where each was learned. So the teacher will ask the children where did they learn the, the particular tale, folk tale that they are sharing, the song or the game and determine how long the students have known them. Ghost stories or scary stories exist wherever there are children. Have students tell their stories and see if there are any common themes or motives. Did the students make them up or did they hear something from their elders in their family? Do they think the stories are old or new? This kind of discussion will bring in lot of cultural knowledge that the children will have. Compare jokes, songs or stories as they are related by several members of the class. Note how a single story can vary from teller to teller yet remains basically the same. So when a story travels from one place to the other or from one person to the other person, every time a teller adds his or her own interpretation also to the story. And once it is shared with the other person and that person will have another interpretation, may add certain characters and will share the story with someone else. So this way the story also acts like a traveling metaphor and it is no longer an untold story. It reaches from one place to the other and every person can add the cultural knowledge and context that he or she has to that story while, while the story is being transmitted to the next person. Have the class try the game of telephone operator or the Chinese whispers. Use small groups of five to seven people Make the story short, usually of one sentence and include in the sentence some unusual adjective or twist of events. Each person then whispers the story into the ear of the next person. By the time it reaches the last person, the story might have significantly changed or altered. This is an amusing and effective way to demonstrate how stories change as they are passed orally from one person to the other person. Ask students to consider their own families as one such distinct group and to look at their own family folklore because they must be aware of the folklores, the family stories, the traditional stories, rhymes, songs that are prevalent in their own tribal culture. So what kind of traditions do their families enjoy? that a discussion can be held in the classroom where the teacher asks the children coming from multiple backgrounds about all these questions and then they can discuss. Maybe they celebrate the same festival but name it differently or there is a slightly different custom to it. Where do these traditions come from? Are they religious or ethnic in origin? Are any of the traditions unique to their families? That is, no other children in the class if uh, talk about celebrating a particular tradition. If so, how did they get started? What songs are sung within their family? When were they sung? At holidays, birthdays, at bedtime or during what festival time? Has anyone in the family made up the songs that everyone in the family now sings? Or have these been carried on from generation to generation. When did their families come to this place? Do they know anything about where their ancestors come from and why they immigrated? All these questions when discussed with the children in the classroom will bring about a lot of cultural knowledge that they bring with themselves to the class. Have students talk to their parents and grandparents about their own childhood experiences. How would students in the class compare their lives to those of their parents when their parents were children? 
what games and songs were popular with these previous generations. Are any of these still popular with the students? Discuss the reasons why some traditions survive and others fade with time. For example, if any stories, folk rhymes or folk songs are not transmitted from one person to the other and then it remains an untold story. That means it will not be passed on from one generation to the other. So this way a teacher can meaningfully engage and discuss with children that how important it is for us to take on the tradition, family's tradition, values, cultural beliefs and alongside learning can take place. If there are any family members who sing traditional songs, storytellers or who practice traditional crafts or ways of food preparation, teachers should consider inviting them to the class because the community and the home link, community home and the school link is very important. Or has students bring family artifacts to class for discussion. They can bring old photo albums, sketches or paintings done by family members, old fashioned tools or clothes, recipes or even journals. There is no better way to illustrate folklore or oral history than to draw on community and family resources. Thus, demonstrating to students how traditions begin and live in their own lives. Family involvement in the classroom has the additional benefit of bridging the gap between the school and home as separate spheres of learning. These two are linked together and should not be considered as separate from each other. Learning from one is always influenced by the other. So if there is a divide or a segregation in the home and the community and the school link, then it will not be a meaningful learning for the child. Different folk art forms, folk songs, stories, riddles and games should be included as text material. Conscious efforts should be made to ensure that the illustrations in textbooks reflect local culture. Decorations, embellishments in textbooks could use local forms such as local mural paintings, rangolis, columns and others. The teaching learning process should make use of a variety of home tongues, dialects and other local languages. The teaching learning process should make the best use of the diversity of local challenges and the local cultural knowledge that children are bringing to the classroom. For the pre-primary and elementary stage of school education, the mother tongue shall be the medium of instruction so that children do not feel threatened by an alien language that is thrust or forced upon to them. This will ensure that the thinking process of the child which happens in the mother tongue or their home language do not get hindered. The school PTAs and village education committees should be encouraged to get actively involved in providing support to teachers for accessing and utilizing local cultural resources both human and material so that there is a link that exists. A small cultural museum could be set up in each Gram Panchayat displaying local art and artifacts. Visit to the museums should be built into the school curriculum itself so that the children go and see for themselves what are the local art, craft, artifacts that are there that belong to different tribes within their areas. The school calendar should have at least two periods a week which should be set apart exclusively for cultural activities. Local artists, musicians, painters, writers and storytellers could be guests and performers at some of these sessions. Children should be encouraged to directly interact with them. Every teacher should be trained to utilize collections of local folk stories, folk songs and folk knowledge as a part of the teaching learning process. Children should be encouraged to collectively and individually explore activities such as cooking, gardening, stitching and bird watching. All these things are naturally existing and will can naturally become an ingrained as a part of the curriculum. Exposure could be through panels of local or other artists at the district, panchayat and school level. Talented local storytellers and writers could be invited to visit schools Possibility of using audio, video or multimedia could be explored in this regard. National and state level bodies such as the Sahitya Academy and Sangeet Natak Academy could be advised to provide assistance to the school education system in terms of providing resource support.
today we talked about how local folk art can be used and can be made a part of the curriculum in a classroom where children come from multiple backgrounds how the cultural knowledge that each of the children is bringing to the classroom can be used so that the child not only learns his or her own language first but also the language the second and the third language and along with that the languages that are spoken by other children this not only aids in learning of the children but also helps in bridging the gap between the languages and this divide can further be reduced and it is a very interesting way that can be used for retention and easier learning for children in the classroom thank you